How Democracies Die is the new book out this week from two Harvard professors. It looks at the breakdown of democracies throughout history and raises the question, is our democracy in danger? Specifically, is President Trump's style breaking down critical democratic norms? And joining us tonight are the authors, Harvard government professors Stephen Levitsky and Daniel Ziblatt. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thanks. For, thanks you, for you identify a litmus test of sorts, four indicators or warning signs of an authoritarian, what are those indicators? Yeah, so we wrote this book because we looked around the world and we saw that before authoritarians come into office and through, an, through elections, there's often these warning signs. And some of the warning signs that we saw before Donald Trump was elected were that the way he went after the media and attacked the media and called the media the enemy of the people, his willingness to reject the legitimacy of elections and challenge whether or not he would accept their elections, his accusations that his political rival was potentially a criminal and he might lock up his, his political rival if he were elected, and his condoning of violence at these election rallies where he would you know, sort of encourage it. So these are the kinds of things that were totally unprecedented in American history for a presidential party candidate to do before getting elected. And in this case, this was, some, you know, this was somebody who was mirroring something we'd sort of felt like we'd seen this movie before and this had happened right. in other countries right and you know that as people see you talking about this book who voted for Donald Trump or supporters of his they would say to you he's the duly elected president of the United States are you really arguing that he's an authoritarian no we're saying that that there is reason to work so he is duly elected president of the United States the thing is that particularly since the end of the Cold War in the last 20 30 years the most common way in which democracies break down, whereas it used to be sort of old-style military coups, today the most common way in which democracies die is at the hands of elected leaders. Whether it's Hungary or Venezuela or Turkey, it is duly elected presidents and prime ministers who do away with democracy through the very institutions of democracy. It's not an overnight yeah. sudden event. It's nope. kind of a gradual breaking down of the Very norms. often it's slow. Very often citizens don't even realize it when it's happening. You were mentioning the attacks uh, from the president on the press. He threatened to, to jail Hillary Clinton. Uh, certainly in some ways there's, there's been a breaking down of the norms, but the institutions seem largely to be holding. There's a special counsel investigation. The courts have stopped some of President Trump's orders. Uh, the press certainly has not backed down. Um, are the institutions holding or should, should we be worried? They are working remarkably well. I mean, this is a major difference between the United States and other democracies are in, that have failed, that our checks and balances have worked remarkably well. Some have worked better than others. I would say the media has worked incredibly well. Our legal system, judicial system has worked incredibly well, blocking a lot of things that Trump has wanted to do, the Trump administration has wanted to do. Mm -hmm. One area where I think our checks and balances have not worked as well is in Congress. In many ways, the Republican Party in Congress has, has shielded President Trump from investigations, and so there's a way in which we think that, and have abdicated really in their constitutional role. And so this is one area where the checks and balances have not worked as well. But you, you, oh, I'm sorry, but you actually argue that this didn't start with him. You believe the norms started to break down long ago. Where do you think it began? No, and I think uh, it's, it's difficult to, to find an exact date, but we say that, 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 that it really started to be visible in the early 1990s with the uh, Gingrich era government shutdowns. That's when, when major government shutdowns really began to, to, to be used as a tool. The partisan impeachment of Bill Clinton uh, was another sign that our norms were eroding, and it really picked up over the course of the 2000s. So, no, it doesn't begin with Trump at all. In many ways, Trump is a product of our polarization and norm erosion, uh, not a cause of it. I just want to quickly insert the, the norms you're talking about, specifically are a mutual toleration and this idea of forbearance. Can you explain for people what these, you, you define these as two really important norms that uh, have been eroded over time. Yeah, so one of the things that makes our political system work are unwritten rules. And these are two that we highlight in the book and elaborate. One is a mutual toleration where politicians treat each other as if they have a legitimate right to rule and to govern and to run for office. They treat their their rivals not as enemies, but just simply as competitors for power. So that's the first, mutual toleration. The second is, is, is also a forbearance, is also a bit unusual. We don't often know that forbearance essentially means self-restraint, not using your legal right to the max, not using your power to the max. And so it's a, in a way, in order for our system to work well, politicians need to kind of step back from the brink and have the courage to step back from the brink. And this is something that has existed through much of American history, but we see signs that it's eroding. Mm. Well, we're going to count on our founders to have set it up correctly and keep those systems working. Stephen Levitsky and Daniel Zablat, thanks so much for coming in tonight. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. want to mention quickly, you. they have a book signing. Yes. Cambridge Public Library next Wednesday, 7 p.m. You can meet the professors there. See them there. Yeah. And now, Eric.